Hi, welcome to a special report with Tech Tonight. I'm Renata Peña, and I'm here with Desiree Valez. How are you doing? Great. Thank you for having me. She is our homecoming queen for 2019. It's really exciting. Yeah, How are you awesome. feeling? Uh, exciting, nervous, a little anxious <laughs> for this next year, but I'm excited. Yeah. All right. Well, my first question is, what pushed you to really run for homecoming? Like, what was your, your thing? Sure. Um, so actually, I was a big part of Latin Link. It began last year, and then towards the end of last semester, several people on the exec board started asking me, you know, they really want someone from our Latinx community to run, because mm -hmm. we've never had it before. And of course, I said no, because that's a very stressful, you know, situation to prep for, and a stressful week of homecoming. Yeah, sure. um, and eventually, enough people started to ask me, and kind of be like, you know, you'd be the first, and that kind of got me a little excited, and then I thought, you know, maybe I could do a really good job in bringing people together. So I was like, why not? Let's just run with it. <laughs> Well, I like the enthusiasm, Yeah, because <laughs> I would have been a little nervous if I were you. Um, what does it feel, like, what does it really feel to make history? Because I know as someone, like, as part of the Latin community, I know it's really cool to see someone re representing all of us, like, in such a great position. So what does it feel like to be the first person to make it onto homecoming court? To be honest with you, since I started and decided to run, I never thought I would win. Mm -hmm. And I knew that regardless, if I won or lost, I would have made history because I would be the first to ever run. And throughout the entire week, the messages that I got, the hugs that I got, it was all, you know, thank you for being that person that stepped out of their comfort zone to step up and take advantage of this opportunity for us to represent us and to show the rest of campus who we are. Um, and it was every day someone else would say something and it would just only make me more excited and enthusiastic about this opportunity. So truly it's surreal. Um, yeah. I, I couldn't thank enough the community for being so supportive and being there every day, pushing me to do the best that I could. So. And you're from Puerto Rico. Yes, right? Puerto Rico and the Caribbean, correct, yeah. yeah. So on top of that, it was, um, I mean, because one of the biggest reasons I chose to do environmental awareness was because I'm from there and I have seen the effects of human pollution in the Hurricane Maria in 2017. And it was something that I realized it's a, not a political issue, but a humanitarian issue. And it, because we're not being affected by it tremendously here, I think it's important that we take advantage of our resources and do what we can. Yeah. Um, but I know like your motto throughout your entire campaign was um, Mientra más aprendemos, más caridad tenemos, y con más caridad viene el cambio, meaning with knowing comes caring and with caring comes change. So what really inspired this motto? Um, I've actually watched so many documentaries and movies on, you know, being environmental aware and climate change. Um, and I meant that motto in actually two ways. The first being obviously being environmentally aware because we have this habit of not caring about things until it affects us directly. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of unfortunate because when it does, it's like, oh, I wish I would have actually cared about that problem six months ago. Um, and that has to do with climate change and being environmentally aware. Like, there are people on this campus that are from places that are being tremendously affected by that. And it's important to recognize that we are a community and we should all stand together. And that's something that's going to affect us all eventually. Um, so with knowing the effects that it's having on our communities, on our families, you'll begin to care more, and hopefully that will lead to a change that we can make a difference here on campus. But I also meant that in a way where we are a very small community, the Latinx community, mm -hmm. um, here on Tech as a primarily white institution, and our experiences are also very different. And understanding privilege, it's very important to recognize the differences because there is a huge difference between how um, being a minority is portrayed here at Virginia Tech versus that it actually feels to be a part of those marginalized communities. So in that saying is that when we all come together and understand our differences and how maybe our experiences are differently, maybe we can all feel at home so and influence that other people. So, yeah. uh, that's actually really cool to hear. I didn't realize it had that double meaning, mm -hmm. so it's really awesome. Um, like so far through your experience, like obviously you've had like such amazing support and like you've had a whole group of people stand behind you. So what has been like the best part of being on homecoming like core and then winning it all? Like your absolute like favorite memory or just my favorite moment. Like I said, I never thought I'd win, and literally up to that moment, I had prepped myself to be ready for the announcement of someone else, I don't even know who. Um, and I remember after that, all the phone calls and like the messages, and everyone was bawling, like sobbing, and we all came together that night and kind of said, you know, this is what happens when an entire community comes together, no matter how small or how big. I mean, last year we were only 65 members. Mm -hmm. And this year we've reached almost 180 because of homecoming, because of the effort that we've done to bring ourselves together and really emphasize the importance of being family and the community and the difference that we can make. Um, but besides like that commitment and support that I've had from my community, there's also been this gateway that I've had 
to show the other people on homecoming court, on homecoming board, what it really means to be a part of that community, and why it's important that we are integrated into, you know, Virginia Tech cultures and traditions that are usually only for, you know, fraternities or sororities or other primarily white institution uh, culture events. So. All right, well, I just want to tell you, like, for me and, like, my community and, like, my, even my family, like, we're really proud and, like, really happy to have someone Thank standing you. up there. Of course. And it, like, makes us really excited, and I'm excited for what you're going to do and for the future and for Earth Day with Des. And I also heard that you're going to plant how many trees? Because I know 15, it's a 15,000, 15,000. <laughs> yeah. So I've actually already, uh, we already have set a date. It's going to be February 29th. It's kind of early. It'll be kind of cold, but we've already set a date, and we've already started fundraising, so... That's so it's exciting. an exciting event next semester for all of us. That's so fun. Is there anything you would like to add? No. Um, I just hope to see everyone come out to the big plant next year. Uh, we had 300 volunteers last year, and hopefully we can get more and actually plant 15,000 right here in Blacksburg. All right. So, thank you. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, and thank you so much for tuning in, everyone, and we hope to see you next week with Tech Tonight.